And good evening, good evening. Welcome to At The Cross Community and also the j &L Ministries YouTube channels. Welcome, welcome. Happy campers. No snow yet. You, you can read what I wrote there. I got three different amounts. I'm hoping they're all wrong. I'm hoping it's zero. And there's my beautiful bride. Hello, hello. Brother Dave, Sister Rebecca. Good evening. Glad everybody could join us. I've got somebody that just started texting me about uh, New Zealand boys that I have. There's Sister Rebecca. Good evening. Oh, I hope everybody had a blessed day. I had a frustrating day. Brother Jim thought, oh, he'll make his bride happy. He'll get a big obstacle off of the porch that's been hard to get around. Dishwasher. And get it put in. I knew I wasn't going to do the electrical. I thought I could do the plumbing. Hello, Brother uh, Roy, Sister Sharon. Anyways, about an inch and three quarters too tall. So I had to cut part of the floor out. Anyways, we did finally get it in here. So <clears throat> hopefully in the next few days I can get working on it. We've got to go to Bangor yes, uh, tomorrow. Leanna's got a doctor's appointment she's got to go to, so I'll take her there just in case it is no one. And there's a few things i got to pick up. So let's uh, let's get started. I do some adjustment here. That should work. So again, good evening, everyone. Welcome to both channels. I think everybody is on. Yeah, everybody's on at the cross. Welcome to April. Brandy new month. And yes, spring is in the air. It was a nice day here. We were close to 50 today. We were 50s yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, if I was doing this message tomorrow, I'd say spring is somewhere. It's not here. But it could change. We could have nice weather tomorrow. Anyways, I'm glad all of you could join us this this evening. Here we are, April 3rd, 2024. And can you believe that we are in part 53 of this, this series? A series of the Gospel of John. Think about this, friends. We finished Titus and dove right into the Gospel of John. And here we are, the first week of the second year of the Gospel of John. What an amazing book, though. So Leanna's going to be posting the scriptures tonight as we go through this. Um, all of you will have the notes there, so you can read out loud with me. You can copy and paste and put them in a Word document so you can study them out later. Now, <clears throat> I want us to look at John chapter 13. And I want to start with verse 21. Now, up until now, we have looked at Jesus being a servant. Probably three weeks we had seen where Jesus was being a servant, right? We looked at our perfect example, Jesus teaching us how to be a servant. Leading his disciples so that they could see how a servant acts. What a servant does. Let's read John chapter 13, verse 21 through 30. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on, one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was a leaning on uh, there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Good uh, good evening, Alicia. Welcome. Praise the Lord. Verse uh, twenty four. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him, that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped, uh, dipped it. 
And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do it quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what the intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had that bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, and Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this platform that you've given us to, to come, to, to pray, to lift praises up to you, Lord, for, for learning, teaching. So, Father, we pray that you would have your will and way. Um, Lord, I know there was a prayer concern. Let me, Lord, we lift up Sister Caitlin. Um, she has a pill stuck in her esophagus. Oh, okay. Tried drinking her coffee and almond milk. It's still stuck. I told her to try apple strawberry sauce. Hope it works. Heavenly Father, we lift Sister Caitlin up. And Lord, we we pray that this choking and Difficulty swallowing will come to pass, Lord. We just pray that uh, that our esophagus will open up the way it needs to, um, very similar to what the doctor did, so that she will be able to. Um, Lord, we pray that that pill will drop like it needs to. So, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One thing about it, um, Alicia, is those are soluble so they will dissolve but i'm sure it doesn't feel good i've had some that have gotten stuck and i have problems swallowing too so um yeah sister christy welcome glad you could join us um all right, so, sweetie, can you answer that for me, please? All right, how many of you, <laughs> oh, you guys asking me? How many of you have had a long day? Or a bad day? You know, those days that refuse to end? In this passage, I want us to... Review the longest 24-hour period the earth probably ever witnessed. Brother Dave has had one of those long days. I'm not sure if I welcomed you, brother. Welcome. Come late and the doctor. Yep, long day. All right. Yep, long. Nothing like Christ, though. Yeah. You know, and absolutely true, Brother Dave. Absolutely true, but we're going to go a different direction. We're going to go a different direction. You know, this is a story that it was witnessed only by a handful of people at the time. And you'll see what I'm getting at here in just a moment. <clears throat> it's told in more languages the scripture that we just looked at. Tonight, we're going to let John, the evangelist, tell the story. Actually, for the last few weeks, in the next few weeks, this part of, Joss, uh, of John's gospel takes place in a 24-hour period of time. <clears throat> and it began at the meal, the Last Supper. You know, as we've seen in the last couple, three weeks, this was a meal where Jesus had, think about how he dressed. He dressed like a slave. And then he washed the feet of his disciples. And then, friends, this was an act that no rabbi would have ever done. It would have been 
beneath them. But then Jesus declares this troubling truth. He says, Excellent, let me back up. You see, the party's over. Now comes the betrayal. Now comes the rejection. I want to read John chapter 13, verse 21 through 30 from the Good News Bible. <clears throat> A little bit easier words to understand. After Jesus had said this, he was deeply troubled and declared openly, I'm telling you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked at one another completely puzzled about whom he meant. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was sitting next to Jesus. Simon Peter motioned to him and said, Ask him, whom is he talking about? So that disciple moved closer to Jesus' side and asked, Who is it, Lord? Jesus answered, I will dip some bread in that sauce and give it to him. He is the man. So he took a piece of bread, dipped it, and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas saw, uh, took the bread, Satan entered into him. And Jesus said to him, Hurry, do what you must. None of the others at the table understood why Jesus said, to, said this to him. Since Judas was in charge of the money back, some of the disciples thought that Jesus had told them to go and buy what they needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. And J Judas accepted the bread and went out at once. It was night. Party's over. It was night, friends, in so many ways. Jesus and his disciples, they would need to understand, they did not change their schedule. They didn't change the habits that, that they knew. It was close to evening, and that meant prayer time. That meant prayer time in the garden. So how do you know that, Brother Jim? Well, John shared it in this book. That's how Judas knew. Think about this. Judas knew where Jesus was going to be. Jesus kept that appointment in the garden. Of course, we know, we're not going to go there tonight, but we know that things happened in that garden a lot different. But let's go with Jesus to that garden. We're going to look at, at Judas's, uh, what he went through, Christy. We're going to go a different direction tonight. You know, you... You gotta love Peter. <laughs> now I know the reason they fell asleep. They had their bellies full and it was night. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I want you to, we're, we're going to go a little bit of a, a little head of where we've been. I remember Peter said that he would protect Jesus no matter what. I'll go to jail. I'll, I'll I'll die protecting you, Jesus. While well, he cuts the right ear of the high priest's servant. Now I want you to think about this. He cut the right side ear of this man. Now, to cut off this man's right ear, Peter was either left-handed, which could have been, but I don't think so. Or Peter came up from the backside and cut his ear off. Right? Anybody think about that before? You know, like I said, you got to love Peter. Peter tried to stay faithful. 
And Peter tried to stay close to Jesus, right close to his side. He didn't want to leave. And, you know, Jesus had been so specific at that meal. He told Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny you ever knew me. You know, friends, and then after the arrest, after they take Jesus, you have the events of the early morning when this made-up trial started happening, and it was behind closed doors. Behind closed doors with the Jewish leaders and all kinds of humiliation, all kinds of uh, abuse. There was, and then think about this, there was complete abandonment by all 12 of those disciples. Have you ever thought about that? And now these events were brought before the world. And the story goes from bad to worse. And we all know the rest of the story. You know, here's my Lord, my Savior, Jesus. He, think back a few chapters, he went from a triumphant entry to the city of God, where, which was Jerusalem. Then he's washing the disciples' feet. Washing the disciples' feet. These disciples who would quickly abandon and even betray Jesus. You got his trial. And then you've got the beating. And then you've got the gruesome death on the cross. You know, it's a, a story that defies understanding. And my Bible tells me that Jesus was crucified between two thieves. I want to stop here for a moment. And I want to ask some questions. There's a reason I'm doing this lesson the way I am today. Are we thieves? Are any of you thieves? Hmm. I got quiet. I'm not even reading any posting. Yes, we are. How do you say that, Brother Jim? How are we thieves? Perhaps we don't rob banks. Maybe we don't even steal a penny from somebody else that might be laying on a table or a counter. But friends, are we thieves? Sister Rebecca says, yes. You know what? My hand's raised. No, I don't take things that don't belong to me. But do I? Have you ever stolen praise that was due towards somebody else? What about from God? Praise that should have come or should have gone to God. Have any of you ever done that? You don't have to answer here. You don't have to answer here. I want to give you some things to think about, some things I need to think about. Have you ever stolen time away from your family? Maybe your wife, maybe your children, maybe your parents. What about God? Have you ever stolen your, tol your, yeah, your, tol your talents? Using them for some selfish reason when they were intended to be used for God. Anybody seeing my point here? Some deep things to think about, isn't it? How about this? Have you ever stolen joy? Maybe you're tearing down the excitement of others in the name of being reasonable and practical. 
You see, brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm a thief. Yes, you heard me right. And I would say each one of you is a thief. You know, between you and I hangs a savior. And not all thieves recognize this. Some turn, some will curse. Others are going to be begging to be remembered. And now the question that I really want you to think really hard on is which one of those is you? You see, friends, the cross was a scandal then. And for some, it's still a scandal now. For anyone who really understands it. Friends, the Lord who gave his life on that cross, he commanded you and I to pick up our cross. To take our cross, take it up daily. Now, I can't remember this gentleman's name. And I know I've read testimony. I've, I've, I, I've heard him doing interviews. I can't remember his name. I'm sure somebody's going to somebody's gonna share it. But there's a man who literally has taken up his cross. And he's committed to bring the first person to take a cross and go around the world. On foot. Taking this 12 foot long, 6 foot wide, 40 pound cross with him. Wherever he goes. You know, I've seen many, many interviews with this. A remarkable, remarkable man. I wish I could remember his name. Somebody could probably do a Google search and, and get it. But I don't want to share some of the things that he said. He says a few predictable and a few su surprising conclusions. He claims the country most likely to be arrested in the uh, for him to be arrested would be in the United States. And the city that he'd most likely be arrested in. would be Hollywood. And then he goes on to say, the cross has been turned away from being left overnight and more than half of the church is requested. But yet, has never been turned away from spending the night at a bar or a nightclub. That's in 29 years around the world. That's amazing. But I believe it. I believe his testimony. No, no, I don't. It might have been. I don't think so, uh, Christy. It, it was a different name. I want to go back to something that I said earlier. At the Last Supper, that was the last time that Judas Iscariot was happy. The last time that he was glad for the rest of his life. You know, friends, today we associate the name Judas with, let me think of some adjectives here, uh, treachery, betrayal. And then I want you to think about, that's it, that's it, sister. Arthur, bless it. That's it. I'm almost positive. I'm 98.5% positive. That's the name. Thank you. You know, I think in, in your lifetime, have you ever heard of people nowadays naming their child Judas? Probably not. 
something you'd probably never thought of, never recognized before. But you know, before Judas's betrayal, that's it, Sister uh, Rebecca. Yep. And the more I see it, I, I know that I know that's the name. I'm I'm a hundred percent sure now. <laughs> but you know, the name Judas. It was a common name. It was a very popular name prior to his betrayal. And the Greek form of the, in fact, I'm going to have Leanna post this, if it will post. It was a common royal tribal name. Hmm. You know, one of Jesus' own half-brothers was named Judas. There was another of the 12 who was named Judas. You see, friends, and I, we need to understand this. Judas was a disciple. And Judas had decided that he was going to follow Christ. He had heard Jesus teaching. He'd seen the miracles that Jesus did. And he wasn't only a, a, a disciple. But friends, he was handpicked after a night of prayer, to be one of the apostles. One of those that was in the inner circle of Jesus. Judas has gone out, and he had paired with other disciples when they go out and preach. And then during some of those healing times casting out demons had the same listen to he had the same authority he, he preached the same message performed the same miracles as the others as the other 11 in fact think about this judas was trusted enough by the others that he was the treasurer. During all their travels, he was the treasurer. You know, and I've thought about this. Why not Matthew? Matthew was used to handling money. I mean, he was a tax collector. And then this. Think about the Last Supper. Judas was seated, seated in the position of honor to the immediate left of the host of the banquet table when they were in the upper room. Wow. And there's some things that have gone on. We're going to skip ahead a little bit to the rest of this message. And I want you to think about some of these things. You know, we don't think of any of these things that I just brought up, do we? We, we remember how it ended up. He, he uh, betrayed Jesus. He went to the religious leaders, told them where he was going to be. And then he felt bad. He got his 30 pieces of silver. He felt bad. And then he went on himself. That's what we think about. We remember how he ended up. How Jesus agreed to betray Jesus. How Judas agreed to betray Jesus. And is conspiring with the, is that the word I want? With the religious leaders for a contract to murder him. For 30 pieces of silver to lead this group to Jesus so he'd be arrested. So when does this happen? I want you to think about this too. We just prayed for you, sister. We just prayed for you. Now thank the Lord.
This happens at Passover. I want you to think about Passover. You see, this Passover celebration it had been observed since the night that the Israelites were freed from Egypt. This is after all the firstborn males died throughout Egypt, except for those that had marked their doors with the blood. Actually, let's go a little deeper with the blood of the lamb, that lamb that they slaughtered. Because that's important in here, too. There you go, brother. Very good. I hadn't even thought about that when I put this together. Very good. You know, during this time, there was an angel of death that passed over Egypt. And if that blood wasn't marked, if it hadn't been splattered around that door, those, fur, those poor firstborn males. Passover took place on the night, on one night, one night. One meal. And then afterwards, and I, I wish Sylvia was here because Sylvia had this. In fact, if somebody wants to remind me at the end of the message, she got her trailer, and I want to lift praises up to, to God for that too. That, that uh, RV. RV arrived today. Praise God. But this Passover meal, Then it was followed by a seven-day festival, the festival of uh, unleavened bread. And you know, by now, it's considered a whole eight-day feast. And one of the most important feasts of the Jewish calendars. Every male over 12 years expected to come to Jerusalem to celebrate. And whenever you had, I want you to think about this. Hello, Brother Robert. Welcome. We're back to Jesus' time now. Any time that you had a lot of the Jews coming together, it made the Romans very nervous. Afraid of possibly attempts to revolt. Especially at this feast when Israel celebrated the freedom from Pharaoh. And, you know, think about this. I'm sure the stories when God led the Israelites on the way to the promised land and when they got to the promised land, how they destroyed places. I'm sure the Romans heard about this. Right? That had to have been up here too. But then you've got the religious leaders. Even the religious leaders had determined that Jesus was a threat to their way of life. You know, we've read in previous chapters of John where they tried to trick Jesus. But they always failed. <laughs> Jesus is becoming more and more popular with hundreds and thousands of pilgrims who, who were descending on Jerusalem. And because of this, it made it necessary in their minds to do something about this Jesus before he gathered in an even larger crowd. Amazing. You know, we find that the religious leaders who here it was their job to do the praying it was their job to do the teaching their job to do the sacrificing the sacrificing of the passover lamb whose blood protects
Let's go back to John 13. I want to read 18 through 30. Listen to what he says here. This is important. I speak not of all, uh, not of you all. Now, when, when Jesus says this, he's referring back up to verse 17, if somebody wants to go up and, and look. But he goes, I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Verse 19. Now I tell you before I come, that when it come to pass, ye believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Verse 21. And when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in the spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus, uh, Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should, who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give sop when I have dipped it. <clears throat> and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. And then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake unto, the, unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, talking about the money bag, that Jesus had said unto him, buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. You know, even though Jesus knew what Jesus was, uh, what Judas was up to, I really want you to think about this. He doesn't leave Judas out. He showed Jesus, uh, Judas along with the other disciples, the full extent of his love. He had kissed them. He had washed all their feet. And now he's giving Judas, this is what I believe, that he's giving him another chance to repent. You know, even knowing what, Ju what, what, what Judas was plotting to do, gave him another chance to repent he offers him once again his friendship and i think it's important to notice that jesus doesn't openly identify judas as the traitor he could have done that with the disciples oh it's this man right here he's the one who sold me out for 30 pieces of silver no, he protects them right to the very, very end. And then we read where the, the disciples are puzzled. They don't know that Judas is the one that's going to do this deed. They don't even know Judas's true character. Although we read back a few chapters ago, there was a little bit of something... Um, Actually, it was when uh, uh, I don't have it right now. 
probably about a month ago, when Mary was washing Jesus' feet, uh, uh, wiping his feet when she had the perfume, wiping it with her hair. And there was some kind of bad language towards Judas. Remember that? But Jesus protects him right to the very end. You know, if think about this, if Peter had known, maybe Peter would have sliced his ear off too. Yeah, he did. He did, Brother Dave. You know, and then think about this. Every day that Jesus was teaching at the temple, and each evening, he went to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives. And see, friends, Jesus, uh, Judas knew this very place. He knew where Jesus was going to be spending some time. And what's really amazing here, of course, Jesus knew all things. And everything had to play out. But Jesus didn't try to hide from Judas. You know, we've read many times in this book where Ju uh, Jesus had said, it wasn't his time yet. But now, friends, it's the time. Now is the time. And this place where Jesus is going, it's time. And friends, I believe that Jesus arranged for the Passover meal He, he, I believe that he knew something was going to happen. And Jesus said, Peter and John, to make preparations for the feast. And this place would have been a secret place to anybody else. Nobody else knew. Because if the religious leaders knew, they would have done this way before this. No, there was a reason. You know, if hmm. I'm going to start wrapping this up. There's some other things I'd like to share, but I don't think tonight's the time. I want to go to the Gospel of Luke. And while I read this, I want you to think on some things in your own life. Think about some things with some of your relationships, some of the ones that you've had in the past, and even some relationships now. Luke 22, verse 47 and, 47 and 48. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? If you read the Gospel of, of Matthew, if you read the Gospel of Mark, they indicate that he did indeed kiss Jesus. And when you think about that time, that, that was a common custom to greet a friend you'd kiss him on the cheek or kiss him on the the forehead but the reason why judas does this is so that the temple police knew exactly who it was they knew for certain the one who they were going to arrest judas kisses him several times Luke points out a kiss Matthew and Mark they indicate repeating kissing search that out you find it interesting so <clears throat> there's something I want you to notice here think about what Jesus said to, to Judas you're going to betray me with a kiss? 
Anybody notice the pain? Can't you hear the pain in Jesus' voice when he asked Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Couldn't you have just come and said, here he is. This is the man. This is the guy. But no, a kiss. Friends, the mark of respect, the mark of affection. What hypocrisy. You know, I think, friends, this is another chance that Jesus was trying to touch the conscience of Judas Iscariot. He had identified with the enemy. But friends, it's not too late to seek Jesus, to seek his forgiveness. Amen? Now, I know the enemy, had, as soon as he had got the bread, I know the enemy had entered into him. And I know prophecy had to pull out, but you know what? Jesus was also human. I think he was giving him a chance. You know, in Matthew, Jesus calls him a friend. He calls Judas a friend. Other uh, translations will call him a, a comrade, a companion. My companion, he says. And then the other 11. <laughs> Those who... It formed a circle around Jesus to protect him. But yet they allowed, they allowed Judas to approach Jesus. Why? Because they still didn't know that Jesus was the betrayer. Imagine that. Jesus hadn't even told them on the way to the garden. And you know, I think about what we've read and and I believe that Jesus probably suffered so much disappointment from Judas, from his betrayal. But you know what else, brothers and sisters? Deepest hurts come from those who are often close to us. It might be a spouse. A spouse who is unfaithful. A spouse who goes off to greener, greener pastures. Spring's coming. It's green out. You know what? It might be a child that you've raised. And you've poured out all your love and unconditional love. Sacrifice for that child. A that child who at one point turns on you. Or what about a friend? A friend who you've confided in and they betrayed that confidence. Or what about that co-worker who stabs you in the back? to get that promotion that you deserved. These are things that happens, friends. And you know, it even happens in churches, within the church family, with other Christian brothers and sisters, even pastors, can betray us, let us down. You know, friends, I'm going to end here tonight. <clears throat> I will pick this up uh, next week, Lord willing. But I think I gave you some things to think about. You know, some things oftentimes it's in the Bible, but we don't think about it this way. We, we think about what Judas did to Jesus. 
But some of the words that Jesus used towards Judas, was he giving him a second chance? Or maybe in front of his disciples, maybe it was to show them grace. I don't know. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord. And Father, I know that there was some things to really consider tonight. And Father, I do pray that each and every brother and sister here would search the scriptures that we looked at and even go into the Gospels of Matthew and Mark and Luke and kind of cross-reference the Last Supper and even the Garden. And Father, I would also pray that uh, each heart is ready for next week when we're going to look into even some more things that might be hard to hear. Maybe it's something that's going on within our lives that you can minister to. So, Lord, I thank you. And I give you all the honor, all the all the glory. And I thank you for opening up my eyes to, to some things. And even get me thinking about some things going on. Maybe some time that I've stolen from you, time that I've stolen from my family. So I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the correction. Father, again, we want to lift up uh, Sister Caitlin with what she's got going on tonight. Lord, we just pray that you'd be with her. Help her to uh, comfort her. To lean on you. Father, we pray that you'd be with her, her family too. And that they're comforted, they're they're believing that she's gonna be all right, that you've got this. If she does see a neuroscience, I, I didn't catch all that was being typed, but if she does go to a, a doctor or a hospital tonight, we pray the doctors and nurses will be with her and make the right decisions. So we thank you, Father, for any other brother and sister that's here and they have a prayer concern. You know our hearts, you know our minds, you know exactly what our bodies are going through. So, Father, I pray that you would touch them, heal them. Father, I pray that uh, any lack that's going on here, Father, I pray that they would ask, Lord, I'm going through a hard time and I don't know how this bill is going to get paid. I don't know how... I'm going to deal with this snowstorm. I don't know. What do I do about these tornadoes? Help me, Lord. Help me to do the right thing. Make the right choices. Give me the protection that I need to keep me safe. Lord, there might be somebody here that's going through a spiritual battle. Help them, Lord. And I pray that each one has the armor, the armor, free armor that you give us. That they understand this armor and they're always operating with it. Lord, we do lift up those who have been dealing with the storms. I know Ohio got hit hard. Um, I noticed this morning. So, Father, we pray for all those families. I don't know if there was loss of life that there was. Father, I do pray that you be with those families and comfort them families. Lord, for property damage, Father, I pray that you would help those who have lost homes or cars that they can get back on their feet and, and move on. I thank you, Lord. Father, we give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, Sister Sylvia. And Father, we give you praise for that RV that was delivered today. Um, Lord, I know that they had gone ahead with the purchase and the guy was going to do all kinds of things to them. So, Father, we pray that you bless this this, uh, this person um, for helping Sylvia out. And Father, I pray that this RV will be a blessing to her. Um, I know this has been something that's been on our heart for a long time. So, Lord, we give you thanks. We praise you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and you know what, Christy? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I have a hard time looking at what happened to Jesus and how he suffered. I just feel it so deeply. That's a good thing. You know, I wish every single human being in the world would know that, would feel that, and to know that that was all done, not just for the world, it was done personally for them. You know, if we could get to that point and remember that, I think our actions, our thoughts, our talk would be a lot different. If we thought about that daily, picking up our cross and following him daily. A neighbor decided to call the sheriff about the other neighbor's dog who killed their dog. Just pray for the peace and all this. Heavenly Father, we lift up uh, these two families that are involved in the loss of a dog. And Father, it's hard to lose a pet. And especially hard when it's due to another neighbor's pet. We can look in the Bible, in the Old Testament laws. Um, Father, we do pray for peace and comfort for the ones that have lost a, a family member, a pet. But Lord, I also, and also, Father, I pray that uh, that there's forgiveness. But Lord, I also pray for the other family that they understand what was done was wrong. Um, that they keep their their dog leashed or or with a fence around their house, that they're more careful. But also that they would feel in their heart to over to go over and ask for forgiveness. I pray that you would be with, the, with with that family when they do this. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. And also, Lord, I pray that you uh, give Christy the peace, because I know this is bothering her deeply, too. We thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, that, that's a hard situation. That's a hard situation. And it shouldn't be. You know, we've had a dog, and we never, ever, ever let her go out loose. Of course, the road is just too close. But I see people whose dogs are, you know, we've had neighbors across the road that have had dogs, and I don't know how they haven't gotten hit. I really don't. The way the traffic, you know, and there's not much distance between Houses to the road. In fact, I've seen small children who have started across the road. You know, when you've got log trucks that come around a corner at 45, 50 miles an hour, and we're not much more than probably 100 yards from that corner. And when they're filled with logs, and a little child, four, three, four years old, run across the road. Goodness. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, Christy, that you had to experience that. That's, that's sad. <clears throat> but, you know, we do need to... God gave us dominion over the animals. And, you know, we need to take care of them. We need to keep, you know, there's a leash law here in Maine for a reason. Two things. You don't want your dog over other people's house. You don't want male dogs breeding their female dogs or vice or, or Yeah. You know, there was a Roddy, this is a lot of years ago, that every time Precious would come in heat. And, and like I said, she was always on a leash. Never was she not leashed. When she went outside, she was on a leash. 
and this dog when she'd come in heat she would he would camp right underneath the the deck out here and you know rottweilers pit bulls i know there's some beautiful well-natured pit bulls and 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 rotties but my wife is scared of them you know they've got a name they've got a reputation at the time i was working on the dairy farm and it was so bad she was so scared that precious ended up messing in the house because leanna would not go out there so i called the game warden uh not game warden the animal protection officer and i i explained to him that uh you know, my wife is scared of that dog, and there is a leash law. And our dog is in heat, and this is where he camps out. So they go and they call the call the people that had him. And I know they had, not from us, but there were other ones that they had uh, um, fines because other people did push it. But anyways you know it's doing the right thing praise the lord and i think i sold a bunny <laughs> or i should say leanna sold a bunny maybe two maybe two that would be great praise the lord i hope somebody got something out of this message tonight um i hope it uh i hope it sinks in you know there were quite a few major things that i think that we could take out of this and hope it helped friends i love each and every one of you um keep each other in prayer um <clears throat> keep at the cross community in prayer And I know there's a brother who may be starting to teach soon. Keep that in prayer too, that the time is, when the time is right, that he comes to do that. Yeah, and thank you, honey, for posting. Good job. I took it easier on her tonight, so I guess it's my turn to take her out for dinner. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, nurse said to try bread to make a plug to push it down. That makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. And we'll keep her in prayer. We'll keep her in prayer. Friends, I love you all. Have a, oh, uh, Brother Robert, I did get your, uh, your text. Um, we'll get together soon i know you would send some dates so I'll, I'll look at that we'll get together no I, I want you to be able to know how to do that and also brother dave at some point maybe we can kind of work a time when all i need is about 15 20 minutes and i can show you um <laughs> possibly possibly Love you all. Have a blessed day, blessed night, blessed week. And keep everybody in prayer as far as uh, tornadoes. I know there's still some tornado threats. Um, all right, brothers, I will. Um, in fact, maybe I'll try my first setting up a uh, phone conversation with a, or a text with the three of us. Love you all. I don't know if I can find it, honey. Do you think you, you know where it is? No, I need that clue. I'll find it. I love you all. See you tomorrow <laughs> morning, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time.